Welcome everybody to a new Flower Circus Walks. Today it's going to be promising to be a beautiful uh, day. Although the weather's not too uh, good in Holland, we're going to see some beautiful tulips and hyacinths. Uh, and uh, Dan Janssen from the Tulpera is going to show, you, show us around in his company. So uh, yeah, without further ado, let's quickly get uh, Dan into the live stream and uh, yeah, show him all the beauty. And so he can tell all about the tulips, uh, about the hyacinths, how it's grown uh, and what he is doing. So uh, let's quickly get him into uh, into the stream. And uh, one second, and um, there he is, Don. Welcome. <laughs> Hello. Wow. Uh, First of all, thank you for joining uh, Flower Circus Walks, and uh, that you want to show us around uh, in the company. So uh, you're welcome. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's such a beautiful company, so uh, I'm really glad we can share this with our viewers. So, uh, yeah, I, I see you're standing next to some uh, old pictures. Yes. So can you tell uh, us a, a bit? Yeah, I, I want to introduce myself now. My name is uh, Dan Janssen. Uh, I'm the third generation of this company. My grandfather uh, started this company in 1927 over here. Yeah. And the little boy is not my father, but it's me. 50 okay. years ago and uh now third generation uh so uh in 1927 we start so six years more and then we exist uh, 100 years so uh, i hope uh, to get to uh, over there um yeah. now i want to show you some pictures of my company that uh, we have and over here you see my wife in in the dahlia period that is in the autumn yeah. in the summer uh, now you see this uh, no tulips for dahlias is also very beautiful. Yeah, it uh, really is. Yeah, and then uh, over here I have some pictures of my children. Uh, they are working in my company, help in my company, uh, peeling the bulbs and uh, drive on the tractor. Already and from a young age. <laughs> from a young age, that's right. Yeah. And uh, this is the last pictures how they see now. Uh, the three, the girl and two boys. Yeah. Okay. That's really nice to have the whole family. Uh, yeah, and the history there on the wall. Yes, that's right. And I, and I, um, I know that people like it to see that. Uh, uh, also, the, the the pictures of the family. So that's why yeah. we uh, put them on the wall. Yeah. And so yeah. The, the fourth generation is interested in in taking over the business, or they don't know yet. Uh, they don't know yet. Maybe uh, the middle one, but we. Uh, much wait, I think. Yeah. We I shall see. see. We shall see. Yeah. Wow. It's uh, okay. Really great. Shall we go outside? Uh, yeah. Then to the plow fields. Okay. Yeah. This way, please. Okay. Now uh, we are uh, behind the farm, and there you see the daffodils in bloom. In the yeah. middle, you see the tubes, and we walk to the end, and then you will see uh, the hyacinths. Okay. Uh, now uh, we walk now on uh, on Sandy Sol. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, yeah the original area where it started the bulb farming. Uh, I should put my it's better for the wind. I think now this is better, uh, Sean. Yeah. To do it like this. Okay. Now we were standing on sandy ground. It was all dune sand over here, and this is uh, uh, yeah sand with limes in it, uh, calcium, and that combination. It's a, it's a very good combination of flower bulbs to grow, especially okay. for the hyacinths. And uh, now that is the reason that it started here uh, 450 years ago, uh, the bulb farming. But now these days, a lot of bulbs will grow in other areas in Holland. Uh, a lot of bulbs grow on clay ground now. Yeah. Uh, I think the most bulbs are on clay ground now because it, it's easier and you have more, uh, yeah, more land. Yeah. Uh, and how we do that on uh, on clay ground planting it is still difficult you think but you put the bulbs in a net into the ground and you cover it with the clay ground and the bulbs grows in the net and the plant grows through the net uh, up and yeah. uh, when you harvest the bulb now you take out the net of the ground and you have uh, clean bulbs also from clay ground now so i okay. think the most bulbs are uh, grown on clay ground but it started here from 450 years ago on the sandy ground. And 
what also very special is of sandy ground that uh, and especially is over here the, the groundwater is very high yeah. it's only uh, 70 centimeters below us and sandy ground uh, have a capillary working so the water comes up by themselves so it is always wet enough here uh, and i never uh, irrigate my field it goes by themselves and that's very special uh, uh, and on clay ground you don't have the capillary working so uh, when it is in dry time then you must give water uh, you must irrigate it then yeah. because you have no uh, result there. and so that's very special over here that you don't have to give water oh, but that's yeah. good though. i mean especially nowadays with, with some longer drier periods and things like that yeah now i i must uh, the last two years it was very dry in spring and then sometimes i think uh, must i give water or not so uh, it, it will be dry so maybe in the future I must all. Uh, I must also give water on my end. Yeah. Now okay. I don't do that. And now I lost connection with John. So uh, if you can ask uh, Don, if, if John can uh, reconnect, please. So then uh, we have some. Uh, can you some reconnect? Pictures. He's already. Yeah, he's already busy. Oh, okay, he's already busy. Yeah. So. Uh, he will, uh, you hear back. me very well, John, because I'm standing with the with my back to the wind. Is it okay like this? It's, uh, it's still okay, we can, we can hear you, and uh, meanwhile I would like to ask uh, the people who are watching, uh, want to know where you're from, I can see uh, Barbara Blossom is in already from Rhode Island saying good morning, uh, Johan Diependal is saying proud to be Dutch, uh, Anita Hall-Dokman is saying, blijft altijd een prachtig gezicht die tulpenvelden. Ja. Yeah. So, and uh, we, we, we can see them now again uh, as well, one, two, three, yeah, we're back again. Okay, uh, now uh, we plant our bulbs always uh, before the winter, in October, November, uh, December, uh, before the winter, yeah. why? Uh, all the flowers that you see here outside, but later, later inside in my greenhouse, are spring flowers, and spring flowers, they need a cold period, they need cold, when you have no, yeah, winter or a cold period in your area, then it is not possible to grow tulips in your garden. Uh, so, okay. uh, when you live in Florida or in Mexico and eh, it's too warm, then it is not possible to grow tulips in your garden. You need a cold period. Yeah? You need to so store the bulbs in your, in your fridge. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, but in the fridge at home, the humidity is too high, I think. So, you can try it, but the result, I don't know. It will not so be good, I think. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, Already one question from Anita. Anita is asking, what's the most exported tulip sort? So what's the biggest variety at the moment? The biggest variety, uh, that is uh, 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 Strong Love. No, Strong Gold, sorry, Strong Gold. It's a yellow tulip. Yeah. Uh, I think 1,200 uh, hectares uh, is planting of that. Wow. I don't know what is in acres. It's four times in acres, I think. Uh, so that is the biggest one, the yellow one. Okay, but uh, let's say in acres it's it's a lot, and <laughs> and in lot, hectares yes. it's also a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's also a lot. Uh, yeah. That's right. Uh, uh, I'm uh, I'm a small grower. I have only five hectares. I think that is twelve acres. And yeah. uh, when you have twelve acres, then uh, yeah, yeah, your bulb farm is too small to exist. So that's why I do other things. Uh, I do uh, agrotourism. Yeah. Uh, because I'm too small for the to, for the future. So, and, and can you explain what agro tourism is for for the people? Uh, now, I show the the, the, I, the people can visit my farm, and uh, I tell them and I show them uh, how we do the process. I show them uh, what uh, how many uh, different fire uh, types you have uh, in, in tulips, in daffodils, and in hyacinths. Not only yeah. tulips, also the daffodils. And the hyacinths are beautiful. A lot of people ask only o about the tulips, but uh, daffodils and hyacinths are also very beautiful. But you go to the show garden there, you can see a lot of different uh, colors and types. Yeah. Uh, so that's uh, that is why I'm started uh, the agro tourism. Okay. Meanwhile, we've got some uh, new people in as well. Uh, Anna is in from Kiev, Ukraine. We've got uh, Graziana in, who's saying lovely tulips. Uh, Graziana from Poland. Uh, Anita saying thank you for the answer. I live in Holland. 
uh, yes, for real Michigan or uh, town imports over 1 million tulip bulbs from the Netherlands to plant here for tulip. I, yeah, I can hear you again. So we're back again. So uh, there's a big tulip time festival in uh, in Michigan. They plant 1 million tulip bulbs. And I think Dan can't hear me uh, at the moment. And, uh, Don, can you please uh, reconnect? So if uh, Don will uh, reconnect uh, soon, hopefully, I'll just uh, uh, get this one out and then quickly. I see that uh, Lydia is in as well. Uh, thanks, thanks, thanks. Fantastic colors uh, from Orlando, Florida. Uh, there's many more uh, coming up soon. So. Uh, and I'll try to get uh, down back into the, the screen. Uh, Anna is asking, how many different varieties do you have? Uh, one moment, and I will ask the question, uh, Anna. Uh, and Don is trying to reconnect. We're out in the field, so sometimes it happens because uh, yeah, uh, the connection is, <laughs> even in Holland, sometimes the connection doesn't work uh, as well uh, if you're in the middle of the, the tulip fields. And I see that I've got him back now. One second, well, we're still enjoying uh, the beauty of the, the, the fields. Yeah, and we've got uh, Dan back again. Yeah, I, I hear you again, Sean, we are in back in business. <laughs> yeah, back in business again. Uh, meanwhile, I, uh, yeah, some people uh, joined uh, again. We got uh, Orlando, Florida in. Uh, Anne was asking how many uh, different varieties do you have? Of tulips, I have uh, of tulips that I that, yeah that I grow for uh, export. You yeah. Mean? Uh, yeah, yeah, that is uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different okay. types, and tulips and uh, uh, five different types of daffodils. Okay, and. and do you choose those varieties yourself, or do you listen to the market what they want, or how, how do you decide which varieties you want to grow? Uh, I listen to the to, to my uh, how do you say that uh, business partners, uh, exp exporters. Yeah. You must grow what they want, so uh, so that is what I try to okay. do. And uh, it's not important what I like; it is important what they like. I yeah, think. Yeah, no, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, now we planted, of course, our bulbs before the winter. So uh, now in springtime, all bulbs come up. You see it there. The fields are blooming now. And it started uh, the first daffodils you see end of February, February or March, you, they come up. Uh, yeah. So then uh, it will bloom now. And uh, what is important after blooming, then uh, the bulbs start to make a new bulb for the new season. Uh, a lot of people uh, take out of the plants out of the garden when they not bloom anymore, yeah. but they must wait as long as possible. Then when the leaves get yellow brown, and that's the time to harvest them out of your ground. And then you must store them in your house uh, by 20 degrees uh, for a long time in the dark, good ventilation. Then you can try to plant them again. Okay. And, and then you must plant them again in your garden on a new plate. Uh, Crop rotation is very important for us, eh? so uh, also in your own garden. And what I mean with crop rotation, um, I grow, I uh, have four products. I have the dahlia, the hyacinths, the daffodil, and the tulips. Yeah. So I have four products. So once in the four years, I come back with the same product on the same land, the crop rotation. It's very important to do that, especially for the tulips and the hyacinths, because yeah. when you plant them every year on the same spot or on the same land, you get an illness in the ground and then your tulips will not bloom anymore. And, and okay. a lot of people know when you let your tulips in your garden, the first year you have a lot of flowers, the second year a few flowers, more leaves, and the third year you see more leaves than flowers. So it is important to do the crop rotation also in your garden. Yeah, oh, that's, that's a good yeah. one. That's something uh, I knew that the growers were doing crop rotation, but that you do it in your own garden. Yeah, it's, it's of course logical if the growers do it, but I don't yeah, think a yeah, lot yeah. of people know. No, that's right. And uh, I know like, daffodils and the crocus and the dahlia, then it's okay when they plant on the same uh, spot. But yeah. the tulips and the hyacinths, especially for that two types, you do the rotation. 
Um, in the meanwhile, uh, the cameraman is uh, filming the, the other side of the canal, and over there you see a lot of uh, white stocks, a lot yeah. of a lot of different tulips and uh, daffodils in bloom. Now this this man is not a grower, but he uh, tried to make new types. It's Eric Breed, and uh, now he tried to make new types, and of course he wants to try to get the new black tulip because when you find the black tulip, then uh, now yeah, then you are a rich man, I think. Uh, but that is his business to make new types and then uh, in the hope in the future they will be better uh, for growers to grow okay uh, there was actually one question about uh, the black tulip as well do they, yeah. how do they manipulate the tulips uh, to create the black version uh, one of them is of course the queen of the night yeah i uh, have more now you have also the the black breads uh, 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 now yeah, not so uh, there's not a lot of black tulips, but I, uh, they never will find the black tulip because uh, black is a color that not exists in nature. Yeah. So I think they never will get result in that. I think. Yeah. But you never know. Uh, some people put the bulbs in a microwave <laughs> in the hope they will change of color. Yeah. Uh, but uh, this this grow do it by the seed and the, and the stamp. Uh, yeah, you put the seed from a uh, red tulip on the stem of a yellow tulip yeah. and then the stem will grow and in the stem will grow seeds and then you plant the seeds and after four or five years then the seed is an, uh, a bulb with a flower and then he hopes of course it is a new flower you never know yeah uh, uh, so it is a little casino of course but you try to yeah to troll it a little bit but it is always a casino to you never know what you get uh, yeah. Uh, if, if people think, if people yeah. think why is, is Don walking backwards, he wants to be part of the flower circus, but it, it also has to do with the wind. So uh, yeah, that's right. Wrong. Because yeah, <laughs> maybe Sean was uh, filmed for the other side. Uh, I yeah. think. So we are Sean uh, film like yeah, this yeah. because of the wind. Uh, um, over here, the daffodils. We stop now by the daffodils. Uh, daffodils of the bulbs is not only used for 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 the flowers. We use it also for to make uh, a medicine. Uh, okay. In daffodils, you have also a medicine that will uh, delay uh, Alzheimer a little bit. Uh, a long time ago, they uh, 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 now they know for a long yeah, and uh, they are now looking also in of that uh, also in tulips and hyacinth if you uh, maybe also there uh, is a medicine in it but okay. the daffodils give a medicine uh, for the alzheimer uh, delayed so not only a beautiful flower it also helps yeah it also helps that's right yes uh, yeah it's it's also a, a different bulb than uh, a daffodil was a different bulb than a, a, a tulip or a hyacinth yeah Yes, I uh, will take uh, one out for you, so you yeah. can see it. Uh, I hope it will come up uh, easily. <laughs> so, uh, oh, it broke now, but you see, <laughs> it's a daffodil bulb, long yeah. roots. And two stems coming out of three. One, two, three. That means you get three bulbs. And uh, what I told you already, when the flower is uh, not blooming anymore, then you start with the bulb to grow. And by daffodils, they grow bigger and it splits by themselves. And when you harvest, two or three bulbs come out of the ground. Okay. Of course, you have three bulbs, so you have better, uh, uh, more, uh, more, more bulbs to sell. And now the biggest bulb you sell and i think when you uh it's a little bit difficult but when i you see the little bulbs already off next to him yeah it's okay difficult to see but it was a little bulb yeah this will be the big bulb and the big bulb we sell the little bulb i plant again and next year i have i have already a new uh big one so but daffodils they split all the time and it will grow bigger it's very easy okay. yeah so we go to the tube yeah that's that's easier than tulips and way easier yeah. than the hyacinths but yeah we that's right a bit later <laughs> yeah we go to the tulips and i will show you a tulip bulb okay yeah okay, 
Uh, first, I would like to say flowers heal in many ways, it seems. Yeah, that's totally true, Kirsten. Um, Anita's, off, Anita's asking more about uh, the same process of textured tulips uh, in, in, in breeding parts, but I think, Anita, we will show that a little bit later because Dan yeah. has a, a lot of tulips uh, inside yeah. as well with all the different shapes, so we can tell more about it uh, inside. Yes. Now we go now uh, to the tulips, uh, the big one. So I uh, started uh, yet, so I don't know how the process is, but we take one tulip out and yeah. hopefully I can show you what is in it. Okay? Okay, great. Uh, we go to that way. Okay. They are the biggest, I think, the biggest bulb splint over there. <laughs> A lot of wind. Uh, <laughs> It's, uh, it's it's very windy today in Holland, and uh, I yeah. It seems that l there was a little bit of rain as well, or there was a lot of rain this morning. Yeah. Yes, very good. Very happy because yeah. uh, it was very dry at the moment. Uh, I shall take uh, one tulip out. Yeah. Uh, I shall take it out over here. The camera is here. Yeah. They look very strong and healthy, the, the tulips. Yeah. So. Now you spread the one next to him. Okay. And, uh, now when I open, you see this is the old build that I planted. Yeah. Uh, and what happens by tulips, now it will blooms. And after blooming, then inside him starts a new bulb. He will eat the old bulb. He needs it for the food. And inside the old bulb, maybe I can show you. Uh, uh, you see already. And there's a surprise inside. One, a little one too. Yeah. Three bulbs, but uh, I take one out, another one. Maybe it's more. Yeah, this is better. Example. You see the, the big one is here by my finger. Yeah. And when you make it open. A little bit too early, but you see already these are okay. bigger. But the process will start now, and it takes eight weeks from after blooming, and then it will be big enough, and then we harvest the bulb. So it's a long time after blooming uh, yeah. before the bulb is big enough. It's not directly finished after blooming, and uh, okay. you see it here. Here's another one also inside him. So sometimes two or three new bulbs inside one bulb. It depends how big the bulb is that you planted. Yeah. And and is it that's why you probably take off the, the, the flower as well, so that the bulbs can grow uh, bigger. Sorry, once again, uh, once again. And this is why when all the, the, the tulips uh, flower, yeah, you will cut yeah. uh, the flowers because then the, the yeah. bulb will grow uh, faster. Yes, that's right. We cut the flowers so I saw that one take off. Uh, and I shall show you why uh, inside the, the flower uh, we have the stamp. Yeah. And the stamp will grow to seeds after blooming. But to take off the stamp, of the stamp is to also take off the seed. So we can't make seed anymore. So all the energy goes down to the bulb. You get bigger bulbs. And uh, we are bulb growers, not flower growers at this moment. The bulbs are important for us, not the flowers. Yeah. Uh, the flowers is important for us in the end of the year when the greenhouses and when we make flowers in greenhouses then the flowers are important but now we are bulb growers we need more and big bulbs how bigger yeah. the bulb how bigger the flower and how bigger the bulb how more money you get so that's, that's why it's important that's really important it seems yeah. like to to me uh yeah I, i'm dutch so i, I know a little bit it seems yeah. like uh, the tulips are flowering later than, than normal. Normally it was around King's yeah. Day or Queen's Day. Uh, That's everything right. Everything was already flowering or even away already. But, it's uh, uh, almost two weeks later now. Okay. Last year, this field where I uh, take uh, this red tulip out was uh, last year, 20th of 6th of April, it was blooming. And uh, it starts now a little bit, I think. Uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, it will bloom the whole field. So it is more than a week later, yeah. more than a week. Um, you see here also a red tulip, a low one. Uh, I shall take one flower off. Yeah. And then go to the orange one. 
is a little bit further. Now I told you over there that you can so many types of hybrid eh, with the cross, but yeah. you have sometimes spontaneous mutations. And then a, a, a tulip will change of color. Now in 2001, I found one orange tulip in my red field, one. Mm -hmm. So I put a stock by it, I, 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 I dig them out separate from the rest. And uh, I plant it again in the hope it will be also next year an orange one. And now you see here, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight lanes of orange tulips. Wow. It takes uh, more than 20 years before you have a new type. Um, you see, uh, when you do it by seed, it takes 25 years, but when it is a spontaneous mutation, you can do it in 20 years, and then you have one hectare of tulips, and then you can go to the market. But uh, wow. uh, it takes a long, long time for you have a new type. But you see, everything is the same, only the, the color is different. Okay, yeah, yeah? It's, it's beautiful. And what's the name of yes. the variety? Now, the red one is called uh, Princeps, so I call this one uh, Orange Princeps. Okay. And, uh, so it's, then everybody knows what I mean. I yeah. cannot call it a, a nice name, but the name is also important uh, for the flower. Yeah, and I di directly know that it has the same characteristics as yeah. well. I yeah, think it's that's important. right. Yeah, that's right. So, uh, and it is a good color because we live in Holland and you know orange. Yeah. is important for us. Um, over here I have a yellow tulip. It's also a low one, only this yellow tulip is uh, especially for the pots. It's short and, um, and uh, it will blooming two, three weeks on a pot, a very long time. And, uh, wow. and, th and this also gives a little smell, a fragrance. And uh, okay. only the hyacinths give a fragrance, but now these tulips, uh, new tulips will give also a fragrance. Okay, and what's the also name? With the hybrid. What's the uh, name? Shooting you know? star. Shooting, okay. shooting star. Okay. Yeah. Nice name. Nice name. It really is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We go slowly inside because then we have no wind anymore. It's much easier. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. I've got a question from Kirsten van Dijk. Does climate change affect your strategy? Uh, will you introduce uh, earlier, later bloomers to deal with climate change? Uh, not yet, uh, because uh, this spring is cold. Yeah. So it's also yeah. It's also yeah. I don't know yet what what the, if the climate change. Uh, I don't know uh, really. Um, I think when it is warmer, then it will be difficulter because you have yeah. more illness problems. I think yeah, you need uh, okay. a sea climate, and when it is warmer, then you go. More problems with with uh, virus. Uh, uh, you get more flies in the sky, and they. Uh, uh, our biggest enemy are the lice, the the, the, the little flies, because okay. uh, they uh, they take some juice from a sick plant, and after that they go to a healthy plant, and the healthy plant will also be sick. And okay. when it is warmer, you have more flies, more lice in your in your field. So, I think when it is will be warmer, then it gives more problems with the illness. Um, okay. Over here, Sean, uh, you see the map. Yeah. Uh, I told you already that I do agrotourism, uh, and all the the the, the news they, they they put in it's all the from people where they come from. Wow. Uh, you see a lot of people from the United States and, and Europe, but also a lot of people from the Middle East. Uh, the whole world comes here. Wow, that's that's a great idea to, to show where people yeah. come from. And I mean, uh, you you can really see that they're coming from all over the world. South Africa, Sorry? a lot. You can really yeah. see that they're coming from all over the world. All over the world, yeah. yeah. I take Antarctica and uh, take it off because a lot of pins were in Antarctica. It was a little <laughs> joke for the people, of course, but... Uh, yeah. Uh, I told you about uh, virus tulips, uh, eh, the, the lice, they can uh, yeah. uh, make sick tulips. Now, over here is a pot, the, uh, it's a pink, uh, pink star, and you see mm -hmm. one tulip is different from the rest. You see a lot of flames in the yeah. flower. Now, and that is a sick tulip, but a lot of people, a lot of, uh, like this more with the, with the flames than the, the normal one. But we must take them out of our field because of the lice. Eh? They they uh, they make more sick tulips. Yeah. And when you have too many uh, sick tulips in your field, 
uh, then you get no certification. I mean, you have no certification, you cannot sell or export your build. So it is important to take them out of your field. Okay, and then that's uh, why I see you. But or tulips, can, you see it in the flower if it is sick, also in the leaves. But with daffodils, you can see it only in the leaves when it is sick. Okay. And when we go outside to the show garden, I will show you uh, how it looks like daffodils. Yeah, and that's why uh, you go through the fields. When one important thing that I forgot to tell you was how we multiply the, the hyacinths. Uh, over here, I have a hyacinth uh, bulb. Uh, yeah. Now, hyacinths cannot multiply by themselves, not quickly enough by themselves. So we, um, we have a trick for that. And uh, the trick comes from the mouses. Uh, 100 years ago, uh, yes, from the mouses. 100 years ago, a farm had a problem with mouses on this farm, and they were eating at his bulbs. They make a lot of damage, and he cleaned everything. But some bulbs he found later on the ground, two months later, after that he cleaned. And then he saw bulbs where the mouse was eating. He saw bulbs with little, yeah, little bulbs coming out where the mouse was eating. So the farmer thinks, oh, when you make damage to an hyacinth bulb, he gives new bulbs. Uh, okay. Want to survive. Uh, uh, now, what we do now, we make uh, we make first a hole in the hyacinth bulb. Over here, I have an example. Yeah. We do it with a special knife. Uh, over here, I have the knife. Uh, it's a knife with an uh, yeah, uh, uh, around it. Yeah, around it. Angle. Yes, and you make a hole in the bottom of the hyacinth, and then you put the hyacinth in a climate control room, high temperature, high humidity, eh, like the tropics there. Eh? Yeah. And then in two months' time, 25, 30 little bills will grow inside. It goes very quickly. And uh, then in October, then you plant the bills outside in the field. You do it by hand. Eh? You make the hole by hand and you plant by hand. Yeah. And after, the, after the winter, you see 25, 30 little leaves coming out of the ground. And when you harvest, 30 bills come out of the ground. But these bulbs, you see it already, are too small for a flower. It takes three years more after that before this little bulb is big like this. And then we get the flower that we wanted. So wow. hyacinth takes three, four years before it is big enough for the for the market. So yeah. it's only multiplying when uh, when you do it by hand, like uh, with, with tulips, it does it in yeah. nature. Yes. But with hyacinths, you really have to do it uh, by hand. Wow. Yeah. And, and it takes four years. And tulips and daffodils do it in one or two years. Yeah. But some uh, really beautiful colors there. And, and, and Kirsten yeah. is already asking uh, tulip mania. Uh, uh, there was obviously, of course, about uh, the, the virus uh, tulips. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, now, the, the camera is by this type, but this type all is, seems like a virus, but they are the same virus. And that is not an illness, then it is a new type. Okay. And what you also can see on this type, it has a little white, yellow, yeah, uh, I say it's a rump edge. Yeah, the, the edge around it. Yeah, around the leaf is a little bit uh, yellow white. It's also special. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's uh, a really beautiful one. Yeah, and you, over here you see a tulip, and it gives two flowers from one steel. Yeah. Yes. Okay, also new types. These double and two flowers from one steel, so that is near free. This yeah. one you see free. Yeah. It's like the small daffodils, which have more flowers on one stem as yes, well. Yes, yes, that's right. That's right, yes. Um, over here, I have also a virus in one tulip. This is the good one in my hand. And here you will see the sick one. You see also the flames and stripes in the in the flower. Yeah. It's very beautiful, but it's not good. No, and, and that, that's why you check when, when all the, the fields yeah. are flowering, then you need to go in and, and check. Yeah, and then the farmers walk into the field to looking for sick plants, that's right. Yeah. Um, oh, the cat is also sleeping. <laughs> um, over here, I have some examples also from tulips. Uh, now, you have the normal tulips like this, hey, the red one, the normal yeah. form, but this time we have also uh tulips with, with an, yeah, a fringe. The fringe yeah the fringe yeah yeah fringe and also double like a rose double fringe very wow. beautiful this is a very popular type queensland this is also very popular uh, is yeah we call it ice cream because it's like 
it is, some people think it is like an ice cream. Yeah. <laughs> Very special. Uh, this type is a uh, parrot tulip. And this is a very new type. It's called Rasta parrot. Yeah. I don't. I don't like it, but some people think yeah. it's beautiful. It's it's specific. It uh, yeah. Some people even think they're sick. People yeah, don't that's know, right. Uh, the tulips, yeah. but uh, it's a, really, a special breed. Yes, that's right. And uh, over here I have two pots. This is an old type Gafota. Uh, yeah. They see it, it, it's a, no, it is nice, but now they have found a new one, and I think it's beautiful. The color combination, and this is Slava. Wow, that's a really nice one. It's my favorite uh, at the moment. Yeah, I can <laughs> I can see why. Yes. Um, okay, then we go. Uh, I think slowly to the show garden. Yeah. yeah okay. Uh, Wendy Ria is asking, uh, how long is it from development to sale? Uh, Wendy, I think we just uh, discussed it a little bit earlier that it takes uh, 20 to 25 years from a new variety for yeah. to, to get almost one hectare of, of bulbs. So it takes yes. a whole generation to, to, to yes, get a new variety. Right. When you find when I find tomorrow new uh, new type, then will be for the next gen generation. That's right. Oh, I see a really big uh, bulb uh, standing there. Yeah, 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 yeah. This this art here. Eh? Um, yeah, it's, it's a little, this, uh, the, the, the form from an, a, a tulip bulb uh, yeah. and uh, they painted an, an house on it. Uh, a long time ago, uh, the people uh, eat in houses like that, that little houses from wood were standing on the land. Yeah. Uh, and they eat over there and, and uh, the lunch. And what you see, a an, an bulb, when it grows, it will, gr uh, yeah, how do you say it? Uh, when it's a big, it will yeah, scheuren. What is in, uh, yeah, it will tear apart. Yes, and he makes that also in this. Uh, it's uh, very nice. Uh, it's a beautiful from object. The, from, yes. Now, then we go to the show garden. Uh, now, you told me that Linda days uh, do the, the daffodils. Yeah. So then we walk first to the hyacinths. Uh, yeah. Over here, I have uh, 80 to 90 different types of hyacinths. Wow. It, yeah, it, it's beautiful when it stands now here uh, to, to bloom. It's beautiful colors. And also the fragrance must be yeah. really great. It's really great. That's right. When you step out of the morning, out of your house, when you step out of your house in the morning, then you, and there's no wind, then you smell the fragrance in the area. Yeah. Now you see all the different colors. Uh, over, this is an old type Jan Bosch, but they call it red. Yeah, okay, it's not red. But when there's a lack of red, they call it uh, red. They, quite, quite they call it yes, that's right. And uh, uh, we stopped by a very dark type. It's also a new type. Now it's almost almost black. Yeah. Uh, and it calls midnight midnight mystique. Now, when you, it is almost, yeah, it is purple, of course, but it is very, very dark. Okay, I think, uh, John, uh, the, 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 the screen uh, freezed, so I can't see it uh, at the moment. Oh, but the screen freezed. So, uh, it's like uh, a little trigger, like there's something really beautiful coming up, but we can't see it yet. <laughs> oh, I shall say, say to John, uh, yeah. we have, uh, we have, we have, we have, we have, we have, Oh, new okay. that. Okay, one moment, uh, Sean. Yeah, uh, John, John will reconnect, and maybe I can uh, yeah. show some some other uh, pictures. Uh, let's quickly uh, show some other pictures. We have the garden. Uh, we were just talking about how uh, Dan and his uh, fellow uh, bulb growers go into the fields and and go and look for the uh, for the bulbs which are sick, and they take them out. Otherwise. Uh, like like Dan said, maybe it gets it, it can infect other uh, bulbs as well. And then we have uh, John back again. Wow, that's a really a dark one. Yes. yes. Midnight mystique. Yeah, midnight mystique. Okay, uh, then we go to the tulips. Yeah. Uh, now uh, you have a lot of different types, eh? early types, late types, double types. Uh, over here is an, uh, a big one. It's like a piney. 
Yeah. Well, sneak double, but it is. Ah, it's beautiful. A, bi a, a big one. That's that's Gudu sneak. Uh, that's also uh, like the people call, like to call the French tulips. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, but the French tulips are not blooming. Normally, that are very late types. Yeah. So they bloom in the beginning May of the second week of May. So they not bloom yet. Uh, so uh, he must wait. He must come back in two weeks. Yeah. Um, yeah. And now you see all different types. You see different names. Uh, some names are beautiful. Yeah. Jacuzzi. Nice name, I think. It's a really small one. Yes. And also, the color is uh, special, I think. Yeah, what I wanted to ask about the color is uh, it seems that the, the color on the field is way different than when a, a flower grower or a tulip grower grows them in their greenhouse. Yes, that's right. That's right. Uh, when it, yeah, it, in, in, in inside it can be much, much different. Yes. This is, right. a, this is a fun one, Miami Sunset, because yeah. uh, last week I interviewed uh, the man who gave it the name. Okay, now, here is Stan. Now we walk uh, through the garden and uh, we see some new types also here. Cabana, it's a very, yeah, more uh, beautiful uh, parrot tulip. Yeah. Nice color combination. It's really beautiful. And, and uh, this yeah. is also just uh, a normal uh, tulip that, that yeah, grew out to, to some parrot type and that's, uh, then they try to see if it stays the same or do they breed like the, the, the parrots together or? Yeah, I, I don't know uh, from all the tulips, uh, you have spontaneous yeah. mutation, but also if you the hybrids, this, I, I cannot give the answer of that. Maybe yeah. I think it is with, with hybrid, I think. Okay. Uh, sensual touch, also a beautiful name, orange one. It's also like when it flowers, flowers it's like a rose. Yeah. Beautiful. Yukes and kisses, yes. The <laughs> next one is the name of my daughter. Okay, that's cool. It's <laughs> fun. <laughs> yeah. So you, you need to have that one every year, of course. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, John is away yeah. again, so if you can ask him to uh, to connect again, then. Oh. Uh, He's busy. He do it again. He's my baby. Yeah. Okay. That's uh, that's great. Uh, maybe you can tell. In the meanwhile, um, we we talked already a little bit about it, about the whole season, what's happening uh, during the season. So obviously, uh, you start planting in yeah. uh, in the late in the in the autumn time. Yes. Now it, it, it blooms now. Eh? At, uh, we we start with planting in October, November, and uh, before the winter. Uh, yeah. Now it blooms. Now, eh? the, um, it will blooms outside, and then when it is finished, then it takes eight weeks after blooming, and then we go uh, harvest the bulbs, and that is uh, half of June, uh, 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 July. Eh? First we started with the tulips, and the hyacinths, and then we en uh, end with the daffodils. Now uh, yeah. when we harvest them, then we dry the bulbs, we clean them, we separate them, uh, different sizes, and then. Uh, First, we look what we uh, want to plant next year, the rest that we will sell. Uh, yeah. uh, it's a lot of work. It's a nice in the summer. Uh, we make uh, a lot of hours each day, six days in a week. And uh, yeah. it's also a nice time to uh, people on the farm. They work. Oh, I think the connection is a bit. Uh, yeah, now we've got better yeah. sound as well. While well, I'm showing yeah. uh, too many pictures uh, at once, uh, okay. I'm showing the picture with uh, with all the bulbs uh, in in the big crates. So there, you can see the tiny yeah. bulbs uh, connected there. While well, we uh, we wave, it's it's your wife is joining us yeah. as well. <laughs> I, I don't know what I don't know what I don't know what it is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> but she's staying outside without the coat. So it just takes not so long, and then she go inside. So. Uh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but that, that's right. Uh, you see the, the little ones, the big ones in the crate, and that uh, now yeah, we separate them uh, with a machine. And then and, and the big ones, of course, we try to sell, and the little ones we uh, we plant again. Yeah. Oh, Over great. here, maybe you can film. This is also a very new type 
Valdivia. Yeah. Also beautiful. And it's very popular at the moment. They're the double ones. Yeah. The, the more the peony uh, tulips, as they call yeah. them. Yes, yes, that's right. That's right. It's, it's, it's really beautiful. While Sandra yeah. Balk is saying that uh, your show garden is uh, very popular, as many people are overwhelmed and surprised by a lot of varieties, li like we're seeing yeah. now. And uh, yeah, uh, also me, uh, Sandra, I haven't seen them, uh, a lot of them I haven't seen before, so that's great. I think a great promotion for tulips. In August, <laughs> September, you can see Dahlia Gardens uh, down in yeah. Anya. So, yeah, uh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully, we'll back uh, then. I see some really bright colors uh, as well. Uh, but another question, I mean, uh, you're doing all the sorting. A lot of uh, things are done uh, by hand. So uh, yes. to, get, to get all the bulbs and, and to get the right ones out. Uh, yeah. can, can we buy the tulips as well from you now that we see those beautiful, uh, beautiful varieties? Yes, now, now you cannot uh, buy them now. Hey, that is our problem from the growers. Uh, when the tourists and the people see the flowers, they want they want to buy it. But it's not possible because the, the bulbs are in the ground. Yeah. And, uh, we harvest later, so you can order the bulbs and then uh, we send to you uh, when the time is right to plant. And that is in September and October. Uh, okay. And, and uh, I have the license for the United States and Canada to send the bulbs over there. Okay. So, uh, 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 now yeah, on my website you can uh, see uh, how to uh, to order them. Uh, yeah. The bulbs. But we sent them in uh, in September, not in October, uh, not in uh, earlier, because it is better by us in a climate control room than by you in your garage. And um, in America, 52% uh, of the people forget to plant the bulbs that they buy. So that's why we send them as, uh, as late as possible. Yeah, and, and I mean, they're beautiful, more beautiful when they flower than just the bulbs. <laughs> yes, yes, that's right. Um, I show you the, the, the ice cream inside. Uh, a very new one is the ice cream uh, banana. Now, the name uh, says it uh, already. It is a yellow one. Maybe it is, it's not open yet, but you see it's yellow, not white. Yeah. And and they, this one is very expensive at the moment. It's very difficult to buy them. Uh, but this, this is very, very new. Okay. Yeah, like you said, if it takes, if it's getting popular, and last year I've seen a lot of pictures on Pinterest and Instagram yeah. of the ice creams. And if you have a different one and everybody sees it uh, online, yeah, then they want to have it. But it, yeah. yeah. That's the thing. It, 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 will, it will take another 10, 15 years probably before there yeah. are enough bulbs. Uh, this um, this white one, uh, I shall do this for the camera. It's it's also, yeah, you see on the, it's, the it's very different. Yeah, but you see sort of the leaves grows in the flower a little bit, yeah. the green. That's this tube is very good for mixes, to yeah. mix them. I can imagine. It, it looks beautiful as well. And it seems yeah. like I can see it with other flowers as well. Once there's some green in the flower, it it changes yeah. the shape of the flower as well. That's right. Over here, I have a type. There's no name, only a number. Oh, so that's in the really early stage. I think so, yes. Yeah. But I get them from an exporter to plant them, an exporter. So uh, I don't know yet the name, but uh, only okay. the number. So maybe if people are watching and have a good idea for a name of a tulip, uh, yes. just put it in the comments. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, yes. But one question, Dan. Uh, the cabana that you just showed us, is that a mix of parrot and fringed, or what was it? Because you... No, it's, 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 yeah, it's a double one, but it is uh, yeah, like uh, what I so uh, show you inside on the table. It's like an ice cream. It comes out like an ice cream. Uh, uh, only it is now yellow and it is a double yeah. one. It is not a parrot or a fringe one. It's only okay. double. Yeah. Um, over here, I have two types next to each other. Uh, you see the edge of the, by the leaves. Here it is white. Yeah. And his neighbor over here is yellow. Wow, that's really special. Top lips. Yeah, and uh, Sean, you told me about the color inside is different than outside. Now over here, I have Queensland. You saw it inside, and now you see it outside, and then you see the, the color of yeah, 
the red of the, 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 the pink is darker than inside. Yeah. You see the difference now. Yeah, you can really see that the, the, it looks more intense, the colors from outside. Yeah. Yes, that's right. That's right. And that's, uh, that's a special one as well that John is showing. It's a, yeah. a creamy yellow one with a dark edge. Normally, it's the yeah. other way around. This is uh, avant garde. Wow. Now, you see my hand? Yeah. So you can see how big the flower is. It's a very, very big one. It's bigger than a peony. <laughs> yeah. Almost, eh? Almost. That's right. Yeah. Wow. Uh, uh, now we look. Uh, oh, he foxtrot. Oh, I know that one. That's a beautiful yeah. one. Yes. But uh, now, first we had foxtrot, and later we get a yellow one. At the same is also spontaneous mutation, and that is foxy foxtrot. Okay. And that and that's over here. John will come to the camera. Now it is yellow. But yeah. also everything is the same: the height, the flower, the leaves. Only it is a yellow one. Yeah. But sometimes it happens that that uh, some uh, grower or breeder tries to trick you because I know that, uh, for example, yellow flight, which is also a popular yellow variety, and white yeah. flight are not are not the same. Uh, family or the from the same so okay i didn't know that but uh, yeah yeah sometimes uh it's also not important for the the, the consumers of course no uh, uh, sometimes uh, uh, i told sometimes the story you have a white tulip uh it, it calls uh, antarctica yeah. and because of the name it is a very popular one because the name is very very good so the name sells by himself uh you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, yeah. I know. It, uh, if people can remember the name in Antarctica, they directly know that it's white. Yeah. So, so yes, that helps. Yes. So that's why the name is very important. Uh, we go to the tulips over there. Yeah. So how many tulip varieties do you have at the moment? Uh, I think I have four hundred uh, uh, oh. tulips, uh, different types in the garden now. But we have in Holland at the moment, I think, 3,000 different types. 3,000, wow. Yeah. And, and oh, so he, is pink, he is pink star, but for example, I show you the pot inside with the illness flower in it. Yeah. Now, now it is also darker, intenser, the color outside. Yeah. Uh, this is an, uh, yeah, an, a Krijgie tulip. Yeah, uh, uh, that's the name. Uh, yeah, yeah, you have Krijgie tulips. That, uh, I don't know if it is the good English word Krijgie, but yeah, you see the name. dark, yeah, the dark stripes on the leaf. It's also a, a decoration. Yeah, that's. Uh, you have, I think, around thirteen groups in tulips, and Krijgie is one yeah. of the, the yeah. groups uh, in in those tulips. You got uh, early ones, single early, single late. Uh, I think we lost connection there. So I can uh, tell them all. Well, uh, sorry. yeah. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> We're back again. Something phoning me. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm back again. So it's uh, really nice of your wife that she's helping you with the umbrella, or she's she's yeah. only using it herself. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I told you. I told you. <laughs> um, yeah. What can I show you more? Uh, oh, I, I, I see here by tulip. It's not blooming anymore. Uh, it's not okay. a good name, but you see here the stamp, how big it is already after blooming. Now to take yeah. off the, st the stamp, just to take off the seed, then the, all the energy goes down. And when I open the stamp, I think, uh, yeah, it's not, uh, I take the one on. Uh, you see, it's maybe you can see it. Is the seeds are inside? Yeah, yeah, we can see it. Yeah, and now the after blooming, then the seeds grow, and when it is uh, uh, finished, and then we take off the seed, and then we plant the seed eh, for the new types. Okay. But I can see it. Yeah, sorry. So normally you take away uh, that part of the stem, so the yes. seeds the seeds don't grow, and all the energy goes into the yes. bulbs or the new bulbs. Yes. That's right. And uh, now we do it by machine. Because you see the, the stems are much, much higher than the leaves, so you cannot do it by machine. But sometimes some tulips, especially the low ones, you cannot do it by machine and then you must do it by hand. Oh, that's that's uh, a lot that's, of work. 
I can imagine, especially because it's the low ones, so you have to duck yeah. down a lot as well. Yes, yes, it's not good for your uh, for your back. No, not not at all. I've got a question. We we talked about that it's uh, a late year this year, as we call it, because uh, yeah. the tulips are flowering later. Is it something I will uh, see in my own garden if I buy tulips uh, in in September? No, no, no. The nature is always uh, come back to the same. Uh, how they say it. Uh, uh, when it blooms later, then the harvesting is always at the same time. It, 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 it's always the same. So you, you never. Uh, next year it will not be late. It can be earlier. Okay. It, so there's no problem. Oh, so the, yeah, nature just adjusts uh, to that yes. part. Yes, that's right. Okay. That's right. And and the funny thing is, uh, you know, we can see already that the seeds are in there. But if you open a flower bulb or the, the tulip, the, the flower is already in there. Yes, when you uh, now when we harvest the tulips and uh, under a micro micro microscope is that what is the yeah microscope yeah microscope you can see already the the flower in the bulb you see the 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 the, the, the seeds you see the stamp uh, uh, so uh, in the summer you see already the flower only it blooms after a year later almost yeah. So there are different stages. I'm showing the people now from stage yeah. one until stage G or G plus probably. Uh, yeah. That it's a little bit technical, but here you can see the last picture on the right hand side. That you can see the whole flower is already uh, ready in the bowl. Yes, that's right. And uh, now uh, we grow a lot of tulips in greenhouses. Yeah. Uh, and when the flower is uh, finished in the bulb, yeah, you can see it on the, on the microscope. You can see it. And uh, when it is finished, uh, three weeks after that, three or four weeks after that, then you can put your bulbs in the fridge. And then you can do the winter inside. And a lot of uh, flowers. Okay. Uh, now we trick them a little bit to give the, the, the cold spirit inside uh, the climate control rooms. And uh, now sometimes you can start it in uh, in the end of August, begin September already with the uh, with the cooling, and then uh, 14, 15, 16 weeks after that, then you have the first flowers already. So that uh, so that we can also have flowers in January already. Yeah. Well, uh, Max Verstappen is passing uh, the tulpari yeah, yeah. at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> yes, he's practicing here. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, you did something beautiful or uh, together with your wife uh, in Delft with uh, the tulip vase, the really big tulip vase. Yes, that's right. Uh, over there is an, an, a vase in Delft. Uh, how high is the vase? Uh, 12 meters. 12 meters high. So it is a very big one. Uh, and over there we planted uh, 10,000 uh, tulips, red tulips. They are now blooming. And the whole family is, uh, <laughs> is together yeah, now. <laughs> My daughter is filming my, me now because uh, for Facebook, I think, or something like that. <laughs> uh, that's right, in Delft. So uh, we have a connection with Delft. It's also that you a long time ago uh, started that. And yeah. uh, developed also uh, centuries ago. So it is a nice combination. Uh, it's two famous products from Holland, Delft yeah. Blue and the Tulips. So that so is nice. If you go on the highway uh, past Delft, it's the A13 for the people uh, in Holland or, or coming to Holland, you will see it uh, standing there. Yes, that's right. It's, it's, so, it's uh, really beautiful. Yeah. And I've, I've seen uh, Anja has been uh, creative as well. She's very creative. We can see it on, on your Facebook page and on all your social media, which yeah. I uh, recommend everybody to follow the Tulparai because uh, you learn a lot about the tulips. You see a lot of creative things. But she yes, was making right. a, a flower heart as well with the, the hyacinths and the and the yeah, daffodils. Uh, now we have every year we have the flower parade in April. Uh, I think the third Saturday in April, we have the flower parade. Mostly uh, they use the hyacinth flowers for that. Only because of the COVID, uh, the last two years we have no flower parade. So this year uh, the organization uh, sells uh, hearts. Yeah, uh, you can buy a heart and, and you get the, the heart with the flowers so you can make your own uh, yeah, uh, uh, mosaic. And, yeah, uh, 
they f they make a uh, thousand of dead hearts, but at uh, the end of the action uh, it was 2,900 hearts. And everywhere in the area, in the in the bulb area, you saw the hearts on on on, on doors and 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 uh, fence, and so it was beautiful. Yeah, I can imagine. Okay. Yes. Yeah, it was uh, actually we had uh, we had an interview with Michael. Uh, I think it was one week ago or two weeks ago. If you go to the YouTube page of Flower Circus, you can find it there on the Flower Circus talks where Michael explains about the initiative. Okay. And now I'm also showing uh, there were three cars uh, driving around with a big heart. I'm showing yes. uh, you the picture now. It was better weather then. <laughs> yes, much much better weather then. Yeah, so that's right. Yeah. <laughs> But that's that's Holland. One day it's raining, and, and the other day it can be really beautiful and in blue skies. Yeah, but we are happy with the rain today, or? No problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Hello. It's, Hello. It's, it's it. Yeah. So you you you're 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 open now as well for for the public, or how yes, uh, how does it that's work? Right. Yeah, we open for uh, for people. They can uh, book a uh, tour around the field, and around the field I have some information. And the tour and it's in the show garden so the people can see the 500 different types of daffodils, hyacinths and tubes. Now and then they learn something about the bulb farming, we hope. Uh, yeah, I mean, I already learned a lot and hopefully the people uh, which were watching uh, as well. Yeah, I, I hope mean, also, of course. I mean, it's it's such a great story uh, to, to see all those things and I recommend all the people uh, next year, hopefully we can travel again. Uh, visit uh, Dan and Anja. <laughs> I hope uh, so. Of it's course. not only because uh, for the people, don't go into the flower fields yourself because uh, you heard it from from Dan. It's their work, so uh, it's their money as well that's in the soil. And uh, and what especially yeah, the problem is by the hyacinths. Uh, the the uh, hyacinths have an, an illness and bacteria, and when people uh, walk through the field and the bacteria come on their uh, trousers or on the shoes and they work they walk further in the field. You get a lot of damage, so that's that is our biggest problem. So uh, yeah. people stay out of the field, please, and enjoy them from a distance. Yeah, or just go to the Tulparai, and, and Dan and Anja will explain you everything about the tulips, the hyacinths, and the daffodils as well, which is way more fun than just making one picture and maybe damaging a, a whole crop for a grower. Yes, I'm for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So, Dan, I, 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 and Anya, I want to thank you a lot for, for showing us all this beauty and, and telling us all about uh, how that goes with, with growing tulips, the bulbs, and that uh, actually uh, I told you uh, this morning, Dan, that such uh, it's, it's one of the most inexpensive flowers out there, but there's yes, such right. a long period before that it's, it's, it's crazy to imagine that, that for such a small price you can buy such a beautiful product with such a history as well. Yes, that's right. It's the cheapest flower to buy sometimes, but uh, yeah, a lot of work. Yes, that's right. Yeah, Barbara Blossom is saying it, it, it right. She's saying, I have now deeper respect for the growers. Thank you for the tour. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah. Dan, Anja, I want to thank you very much. Uh, John, who was uh, uh, behind the camera. Thank you as well, uh, John, again. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Yeah. And uh, hope to see you soon again. The 12th of May, we will do another tour with, with Tulip Fields. So I uh, okay. hope to see you then or tomorrow with the Flower Circus Talks with uh, Miro van der Berg. So uh, thank you very much and uh, stay safe.